A lot of Doom games are going on sale, Temtem gets 50 more monsters, and more. I'm Andrew Dornan, and this is my show, What's New? So, a couple of things. One, this is my second take. Um, the first take went horribly because the battery died, so I, I, while I was waiting on the battery to recharge, I was working on getting some other videos uploaded. So, we should be good for now. Also, I'm wearing a robe because it's kind of cold. <laughs> like, the... We got another cold front, which, I mean, is great and all, but, like because I switched rooms, I don't get the morning sun. So if I just turn this off, I mean, oh, actually, hold on. That looks way better than I expected. Well, damn, <laughs> this looks way better than, than what I was thinking. I look great here. I'd turn that on and like it glows up everything in the back. So you know what, we're sticking with this. So first story of today is, well, I just said that a bunch of Doom games are going on sale uh, on the Nintendo eShop for the Switch. You have Doom, Doom 2, and Doom 3. They are all on sale. Doom 1 and 2 are on sale for $149 each, and Doom 3 is on sale for $299. And then if you go over to Steam and GOG, you can find those games for sale at roughly the same price there. Uh, and then on Steam, you have a, uh, additional games. And I should say that on GOG, um, it's a little different than what you might be expecting. Um, they have Doom 3, just on its own. And then the original Doom, they have the Ultimate Doom, which is kind of the same thing, except it's kind of like a director's cut of Doom. And then Doom 2 is... Well, it's Doom 2 plus Final Doom, and that's what the bundle is called. So, it's a, it's a little out there, but I still recommend all of it. Also, if you get them on GOG, you get them DRM free, which means you don't need an internet connection, which is real nice. And you can install them to any computer without having to install a client, which, again, is really nice. Um, let's see, what else? Um, Steam is like, it has the whole franchise, so the early doom games and then um doom 2016 did it really come out in 2016 wow it's been a while um so yeah <laughs> you got the the newer doom games on top of uh doom one two and three and this is all because doom eternal is coming out in, in march like the same day as animal crossing so that's really awesome and while I've been talking, uh, there should have been some Doom footage that I recorded earlier, uh, just because, you know, I, I wanted to show off some Doom, and here you go, there's, there's the Doom. <laughs> Alright, our second story of today is that a demo will be releasing soon for the Resident Evil 3 remake. Uh, this was reported on by Polygon, and this is all from, like, a tweet from the official Resident Evil, uh, Twitter account saying that, you know, there's, a uh, there's a demo coming at some point in the future. Look forward to that. So I'm really excited for that. My laptop will probably not be able to run <laughs> the Resident Evil 3 demo, assuming it comes out on PC, but it would still be uh, exciting to see all the footage nonetheless. Um, I am someone who uh, occasionally I'll pick up a Resident Evil game and I'll have a lot of fun playing it. Uh, and I've really wanted to pick up the remake for Resident Evil 2 but I just never got around to it because I'm not 100% sure if my computer will run it. But that that's just a little side tangent. Uh, some important things that you need to know about Resident Evil 3 Remake is that if you haven't already uh, heard that they are removing the mercenaries mode from the original and also they're changing some of the endings it's just it's kind of weird um but i guess it makes sense like maybe they're updating them for like a, a modern demographic or maybe just back then the endings were uh a bit contrived because i will admit i haven't played through resident evil 3 so i'm just taking them on their word uh but a new uh, asymmetrical multiplayer mode will be added uh, it will be called resident evil resistance and i'm really excited to see 
uh, what, uh, what sort of uh, more information on that we will be getting. All right, our third story of today is that the Xbox Series X is gonna have some pretty handy features on it. Aside from being completely backwards compatible, uh, backwards compatible like we talked about uh, in a previous episode, there will also be some uh, additional uh, good stuff here and there. The first thing that popped up was that the previous generation controllers will be uh, working with this new system. So if you spent like $180 on one of those Pro controllers, you're not screwed. You can still use them with the Xbox Series X, which is all well and good because that's the one thing a lot of us hate is buying more controllers. Like, uh... Side tangent alert. Uh, I used to have two GameCube controllers. Uh, this one that's an official uh, Nintendo controller and then a GameStop branded one. And my GameStop branded GameCube controller died. And so I'll have to, before I can invite friends over, I'm gonna have to go and get more. So that's nice that the Xbox Series X is back, uh, having that, that bit of backwards compatibility with controllers to save everyone. Uh, some money because it's getting to the point where like controllers cost as much of a as much as a game and it's absurd but you know it's fine <laughs> uh on top of just previous generation controllers in general like um just like the xbox one controller xbox 360 control and the uh pro controllers or i guess they're the elite controllers pros for nintendo uh, they will also be compatible with the adaptive controller that little uh, it's not really little, that modular uh, controller that uh, was made with accessibility in mind, that will be compatible, which is really great. Uh, and then also various other accessories, like uh, I think there's like the Turtle Beach and then some other kinds of headphones that were made exclusively for Xbox, those will be compatible with the Xbox Series X. On top of that, they will be using the uh, latest like iteration of solid state drive technology with uh, the standard NVMe format. NVMe, lowercase e, the rest is all up, uppercase. Uh, these are the more higher end versions of uh, the solid state drives that you can get on the market, which is really nice because the solid state drive is like so much faster than a spindle drive. And I know that because uh, my laptop has both a regular uh, hard drive, which is spindle based and also an SSD. And the difference between loading on those two drives is immense. Uh, and then on top of all of this power, not just in terms of solid state drives, but also in like processing and graphical power, uh, the system will natively support uh, that real time ray tracing, which seems to be uh, like the big craze nowadays. Or nowadays. And I, I get it, it looks cool. Um, but I think once it gets to the point where like every game's using ray tracing, it might uh, lose its appeal. Maybe that's just me. Um, but then on top of that, speaking of like looking nice, uh, they will be using, the system will be using HDMI 2.1, which will allow your monitors. Oh wait, it's out of frame. I have a monitor right here and, um, and Max is out at 1080p, but if you had like a 4K TV, then with uh, that HDMI, 2.1 port, uh, port with an HP, uh, HDMI 2.1 cable, you'll be able to get the most out of your Xbox Series X, which would be really cool. And then finally, uh, they have a, they will be implementing a smart delivery service, which uh, just to like oversimplify it, it's like the next step in evolution for cross play and cross um, purchasing. Uh, so that's something like if you bought something, let's let's use PlayStation as an example because it's the thing that popped into my mind. Despite us talking about Microsoft, there's a plane overhead. There's an airport like a few miles out of town, and um, it's like I guess like a private airport or something. So occasionally you get planes flying overhead but whatever. Um, 
back to the to the example uh playstation with the the vita and the ps3 they had a thing where if you bought a game on the playstation 3 and it had a version on the vita you got the vita version for free and vice versa so that's really nice if you got something for um like the uh the pc through their microsoft store and it had an xbox version then you would get the xbox version for free which is very pro consumer because i know if there's one thing that's really annoying is buying multiple copies for multiple systems but uh i guess at the same time if you're a collector you don't really mind but this is just something that's really nice to have and uh, that's all the information we have on the Xbox Series X for now. I am definitely excited to see uh, what additional uh, information we get about the system in the future. All right, our fourth and final story of today entirely. I've dropped the, the website channel news segment for now just because nothing is happening. But if a big major thing happens, I'll definitely make a note about it in here. So, what is that final story? Our final story is that 50 new monsters will be added to Temtem. You guys remember the Temtem, that Pokemon-inspired open-world MMO, RPG, collect-a-thon, spectacular, that's an early access. Yes, uh, that, is, that game is getting uh, 50 more Temtems by the end of 2020. That needs to be stated. Uh, they have released a roadmap which is separated into uh, three specific sections, spring 2020, summer 2020, and fall 2020. So this is basically the, the spring, summer, and fall of this year. In the spring, they are hoping to bring in ranked matchmaking, which would be really nice. The spectator mode, so you can just like look at battles that are happening and just kind of like look around the world. An in-game chat, so you don't have to rely on third-party applications like Discord or Skype or Google Hangout. Uh, and chat bubbles, so if you just wanted to do like a quick chat like battle or duel me, then like, you know, a little thing that would pop up with like a little icon that suggests that. And then club management, so like kind of like if you wanted to like have your friends all in like a like a group that you could like message them directly within temtem that's what the the club management tool would be for and then for summer we get the first new uh bit of content which is the new island of kisiwa i don't think i'm pronouncing that correctly at all uh but this new island will introduce 25 new temtem uh, player housing will also be introduced, which would be really nice. And top of climbing gear and additional emotes, which will be very nice. And then finally for fall, we will have another new island. I'm gonna say Saipanku, but that's probably not right. Uh, this new island will come with an additional 25 new Temtem, and it will... this like big update in the fall will also introduce the first mythical temtem in-game tournaments a quest diary to keep track of all of your quests and achievements so overall these are really good additions it's nice to see that the game is really taking off and that the developers are really pouring their heart into this game i would like to stress again that this is an early access so things could change by the time it really uh reaches 1.0 which is that release candidate version um things can change a lot more temtem can be added some might be removed you just have to be prepared for anything um but that is that story uh, you can read more about these changes in the polygon article listed below or above if you're viewing on facebook and um, also the actual blog post made by the developers that is going to be it for today thank you so much for watching uh i've been having a blast uh recording these uh news shows it's been a little touch and go uh a couple of times now where i'm not sure if i would have been able to produce an episode um that day but i still managed to get it done uh recording them on um Mondays and Wednesdays has been uh, a bit touch and go, but uh, I've moved some things around and now hopefully 
Um, I can start working on these a lot better, although I did just pick up another project. So who knows? Um, also, if you wanna, if you really enjoy this and wanna know ways to support me and my content, as always, I have a link to the uh, support the content page. And if you just wanna know more about my new show, I will have a link to the main show page in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. I am a little out of breath. Uh, I'm still getting used to these kinds of videos because uh, I haven't done them in a long time. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on uh, Friday. Yes, I'll see you Friday for another episode of Andrew Dornan's What's New. Bye-bye.